What is going on you guys, AK40 Kevin here in the Gamer Heaven. As we all know, there is a major problem with the VRAM or video memory getting way too hot on the 3080 and 3090 graphics card, particularly the Founders Edition or FE cards. However, the third party cards like MSI and EVGA are also getting astronomically high VRAM temperatures, yet your core temperatures are sitting at a nice comfortable 60 degrees Celsius or less under load but your VRAM's screaming at 120. That's 230 degrees Fahrenheit, so obviously way too hot. So what I myself and many other miners and gamers out there have done is tapered back the power limit to about 65%. That way it drops your VRAM temperatures. However, you're limiting the power output of your card, whether you're using it to mine and you're trying to maximize your hash rate or you're using it for gaming and you're trying to get the highest frames per second. Keeping it at a lower power limit for the long-term life of the card will increase its longevity, but you are greatly reducing your performance. And that is where these come into place, an aftermarket set of thermal pads. According to the 30 series community, a pair of aftermarket thermal pads like this will drop your temperatures. Generally 30 is what I'm seeing and reading in forums and videos. So without further ado guys, we're gonna uninstall the 3080 from the R11 back there and install a pair of thermal pads. Let's get it. Alrighty guys, I have the Alienware R11 unplugged from the wall. I have two uh, distinct bundles here that are zip tied together, or not zip tied, they're Velcro wrapped together. I have all my USB and power cables here, and then my three displays here for the uh, 40 inch TV, my primary gaming monitor, and my secondary stream slash, you know, Ethereum mining monitor or whatnot. So getting the case apart is actually quite simple. I'm gonna go ahead and reposition you guys a little bit closer. So if you, have, if you have an Alienware R10 or R11, they have virtually the same case or chassis as Dell slash Alienware likes to call it. So you're gonna remove this Phillips head screw right here. And one of the things I do like about this is how easy it is to pop off the side panel and get access to the components. Uh, being somebody that generally builds custom PCs and got a pre-built, I was a little concerned about, and then you're gonna pop both of these up into the unlock position, pull this out, side panel pops off like that. She's a heavy girl for being a uh, smaller than a regular mid ATX tower, but larger than a small form factor PC. It's kind of an in-between because of the wedge shape. It's actually quite a bit more compact than a regular uh, mid tower case. It just pops off like that. Make sure when you put it in, you start from the bottom at an angle like that. And then make sure that these top um, tabs are lined up and you pull this out while you snap in the top. I know it sounds like a lot of steps, but once you've done it a couple times, it is super duper easy and then you are able to swivel out your PSU or power supply unit. Now, before you do that, I would unplug, I would un uh, unplug this data cable that goes to your uh, mechanical hard drive if you do have a mechanical hard drive up here, which, spoiler alert, we're not going to for very long because I got some additional fans. We are going to replace the front intake fan and add a second 120 millimeter intake fan right here as well. So there will be no hard drive here. This is gonna get relocated down here to one of these vacant trays at the bottom here. But you wanna unplug this because when you swivel out the PSU or power supply unit, uh, this is gonna bend and it's just gonna pop it off. But if it doesn't pop it off, you might actually bend or damage that cable and you do not want to do that. So. I do like the design with the swivel mechanism here. As you can see, there's the 3080 in there. She is warm because I just got home from work and she of course is mining Ethereum while I'm not while I'm uh, not using my PC to game, stream, or 4K video edit for the channel. All right, so on my particular PC, I have a 10th generation i7 in here. Uh, it is overclocked to five gigahertz. I've had no cooling issues whatsoever at uh, idle. It's at about eh, 40 degrees Celsius and under load, she's generally at about 65. Uh, to 70 under extreme load. If I'm doing uh, rendering a 4K video or I'm doing a benchmark, it'll get up to the 85 range, which I know is a little bit warm, but it's not near that critical 90 Celsius range. And it's only for a very short burst while doing a very intensive benchmark. If I'm AAA, if I'm gaming a AAA title or streaming, it never gets uh, out of the 60 range, which is good. I do have two sticks, two 8 gigabyte sticks of HyperX RAM in there. We are gonna order two more as there is uh, four slots here and only two of them are occupied, two are vacant. And then of course you have the Dell slash Alienware uh, 3080, which is basically uh, more or less, it is a Founders Edition card. However, they put this kind of heat sink or heat block on here, some cooling fins on the side, and then two fans on the bottom and some LED um, GeForce RTX illuminated lights here. They can't change color or anything. They're just illuminated white. Not that it even matters on this PC because you do have a full uh, cover on the side, a side panel. You don't have 
tempered glass or anything to really show it off. To remove the GPU, the first thing you're gonna do is remove the two power, two power cables right here. There is a small prong on the bottom that you need to depress while you are removing it. And uh, they pop right out like that. You might have to give them a little wiggle. They are a little bit finicky the first time that you remove them, but nothing too crazy. Then you're gonna go ahead and remove the support beam right here. I don't really like the support bracket because you kind of have to bend the card up on the motherboard in order to get it out. You just, well, that was pretty easy, but sometimes you actually have to uh, pry it out a little bit. And this thing is uh, rubberized in there to keep down vibration and also to, you know, not damage uh, the card with a plastic to plastic or plastic to metal connection. So that is very nice. Right there are my index fingers it is. You're gonna push that. And that is going to detach the card from the motherboard from the PCI slot. And then you're just gonna wiggle it out. There we go. Come on there, big girl. Oh my God, what is this? What is this, Dell? What is this? They left some plastic wrap on the graphics card. Jesus Christ. Well, there's your 3080 graphics card. This is probably a good time for me to take a picture for my thumbnail, right? All right, this is a great opportunity to get a look at the guts or the internals of an R10 or R11. Here's your motherboard here. It is blue, branded with some Aurora and Dell markings and whatnot. This is the boot drive, the NVMe SSD. I do have a second NVMe SSD that's on an adapter right here that I did install on this channel, as there is only one slot on the MOBO for an NVMe SSD. And well, I had a second one sitting around, a one terabyte. So you have your CPU cooler here, which is water cooled, obviously. You have your two hoses. You have your 120 millimeter exhaust fan up there. You have this heatsink here, which isn't on some of the lower spec models. And if it is not, you can buy this from Alienware or Dell for $4, or you can find it on Amazon as well. And I strongly, strongly recommend installing this. It takes three minutes, $4, and does dissipate a lot of heat off of the motherboard. That one and that one right there as well. Then you have your PCI slot. This is where the graphics card is going to sit. Obviously, as you see, there are two cutouts in the back for all of your video ports for your 3080 graphics card or whatever graphics card you have. There's only a single intake fan, 120 millimeter. Like I said, we are gonna be relocating that hard drive to the bottom down there and putting in a 120 millimeter fan. And other than that, dropping in two more sticks of RAM, and that's probably gonna be it customization, modification, or upgrade wise for the R11. All right, so we're gonna start by taking this back plate off of the 3080. Now, depending on what model you have, the screw orientation and the layout might look a little bit different. So what I advise you do, since I'm video recording, I can just basically come back to this video and see how everything looks. However, take a picture with your phone or draw a, take a piece of paper and draw out a little diagram with where all the screws are. And that way you kind of know where everything goes back in place. These four screws here are uh, spring screws. So basically you have to unscrew them in a zigzag pattern, similar to putting a car wheel and tire on. You want to go in a star pattern because they basically divide the pressure amongst them. All right, so you want to make sure that screw stays on, or that spring stays on the screw like that. And again, like I said, when uh, uninstalling and installing these screws, you wanna go in kind of a uh, zigzag pattern, a little crisscross applesauce, so to speak. Now, if you're worried about static shock to your card, you can wear a static bracelet. I actually do have one in my uh, drawer, but I just, I never really wear one. I built several PCs and I've never had an issue. What you can do, and I do recommend, is touching some bare metal, like on your case, for example, before you start touching your silicon parts, your printed circuit board, stuff like that. Um, but like I said, that's all I've ever really done is touch the little bare metal first and I've never had any issues yet. So fingers crossed, knock on wood. Oh, that's why they're difficult to get out. These do have blue Loctite on them. So you might have to use a little muscle to break them free, especially with a small slick screwdriver like this. All right, so I have all the screws separated from left to right as they are all different screws. The four on the outside are the same, uh, just about, yeah, just about the same. And then these two right here, these four right here are the same, then these four right here are the same, and then this one is special in its own. So I have all those separated from left to right, and I'm gonna keep the graphics card kind of oriented with this um, back tab to the front left. So that way I'll kind of be able to remember where everything is. So those are some of the thermal pads that we're gonna be replacing, but that's not it. We need to take off the remainder of this, we do need to take apart the remainder of this GPU. So we're gonna remove these two screws right here. These are also spring screws. There are some um, cords in here, some cables that you need to unplug. Actually, you technically don't need to unplug them. You can kind of just set it like that. All right, so we are going to install some thermal pads double stacked around the outside of this heat pipe uh, core here or center. Now I did order four of these. I'm gonna return any of the ones that I don't use 
Um, so obviously I'll try not to open any more packages than I need to, but these are very, very small. The uh, actual landing page on Amazon does not do justice to how tiny these are. That's why I did order four of them because in the community I read exactly how tiny they are. In fact, this box is not nearly what's inside. Uh, that is all you get right there. So very, very small thermal pads without a doubt. So I am gonna add a little bit of thermal paste in the middle here. There's a little dry splotch, but all in all, this is a brand new card. The thermal paste is still very well intact. Yes, it was a little bit of a messy job from Dell, but it's still covering everything it needs to. So I'm not gonna wipe everything off. If you are gonna do that, you're gonna take some IPA or isopropyl alcohol, 70% or better. I will have that linked in the description below. You can use rubbing alcohol, but IPA is basically a more pure form of rubbing alcohol that isn't as watered down. And then use uh, coffee filters, paper coffee filters, not paper towels because those leave little lint and residue behind. If you don't have coffee filters, use a microfiber rag, like a automotive microfiber rag. Now this stuff is very, very soft, almost like Play-Doh, so you wanna be kinda careful with it. You don't wanna touch it with your fingers too much if you uh, don't have to. Obviously it's kinda difficult not to, but. All right, there's our four pads on the heat pipe section. By no means is it the prettiest install in the world, but it is covering everything that I wanted covered. Like I said, I'm gonna put another little dab of thermal paste right there in that dry splotch in the middle. And then we're gonna go ahead and reconnect these two wires and bolt up the bottom and replace the thermal pads on the top plate here. Now I will have not only the thermal pads and the tool kit, but also the, uh, these aren't syringes, don't be shooting anything up boys. Really don't need too much at all. In fact, that's probably more than I needed. Bam. And they're reusable, you just put the cap back on. Perfect, perfect. Flip her back on her ear. All right, I'm gonna set the GPU to the side for a minute and we are gonna replace these thermal pads. We are gonna be double stacking these as this is one millimeter and this is 1.5. So we're actually gonna stack them up to two millimeters, which is good because this back plate doesn't really make proper contact uh, with the actual PCB uh, very well at all. In fact, we might actually add a little bit of extra uh, thermal padding in here as well, as long as it's not going to uh, mess anything up. So it seems kind of weird to me that this chipset right here is completely non-thermal padded whatsoever. Um, as you can see, when you put this back on, there's gonna be no thermal pads covering it whatsoever, which to me seems a little bit odd, but I'm, I'm assuming it came from the factory like that for a reason with no thermal pad right here covering those chips. Please somebody drop in the comment section below if you have a similar card and if you actually covered this with a thermal pad or thermal pads, I should say, and it caused any issues or if it actually uh, decreased your temperatures and did not cause any harm or why there's not a thermal pad right here because I honestly don't know. I've dug into the forums and uh, the 3080 community and I really haven't found anything, which makes me a little bit nervous. Good, good, all my thermal pads are making contact. All right, boys, the results are in. Didn't go down a single degree, not one single Celsius, not a half of a Celsius and my mega hashes exactly the same. I'm gonna bring you over there, let's look at this. By the way, I'm masking my frustration with fake positivity. Let's let's go over there, guys. All right, let's go ahead and dim that so you can see what you're looking at there. All right, so as you see, a nice cool 50 degrees Celsius under load while I'm mining. Mm, VRAM 104, which isn't terrible, that is acceptable. I mean, that's not, that's not terrible. So 110 is when the card starts throttling on the VRAM. And according to NVIDIA customer service reps and technicians, the VRAM can hit 110 safely as long as the core clock or the core temperature is under 60 degrees Celsius, which as you can see, we're at 50 here. But that's when it starts throttling. So you're losing mega hash, you're losing frames per second if you're in game. Now, 104 is not bad. It's not throttling there or anything like that but this did not go up or down a single degree. It will go down to about 102, then bounce back up to 104, but it was exactly like that on the stock pads. Now to be 110% honest, what my nipples are all buttered up about right now is for one, huge waste of time, huge waste of time. I literally have like seven badass tech, yet I have literally like seven badass tech gadgets that I need to review this weekend for you guys. Could have been working on any of those, not to mention, the whole point of me doing this damn thermal pad install, I had my hopes set so high. It's like Cyberpunk 2077. The bar was set so high, and then the actual the actual results were not not there. Uh, you know, and 
the damn 3080 and 3090 community on Reddit and whatnot, you know, oh, 30 degrees Celsius just by changing thermal pads. If something sounds too good to be true, it most likely is. And I'm not saying some of, some people did not see those results. I'm not calling anybody a liar or anything like that. However, there are different models of graphics cards, 3080s. You got MSI, Evga, Founders Edition cards. This one is a Dell slash Alienware card. Maybe they use decent thermal pads to where it's not really going to make that big of a difference using aftermarket ones. I use the exact thermal pads that was recommended by the entire forum. Um, didn't see a goddamn bit of difference. Wasted my time, not to mention wrist fucking up my GPU by taking it apart. Now, this isn't just like building a PC. Taking apart a GPU, there's a lot of room for error in there. So I I don't know. If any of you guys want to do this, all the stuff that I use is linked in the description below. If you want to, I don't know, you know, spend an hour not dropping your temperatures, not raising your mega hash, not playing video games, not fucking your girlfriend, just, just dicking off in your office, just dicking off in your game room, doing a modification that makes no difference whatsoever. Jesus fucking Christ. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video. Change your thermal pads. It makes a world of difference. See ya.